Hey guys, Chad here with the Reptile Rangers. Now we're at the Kernersville Reptile Zoo and Medical Center again today, and we are going to talk about undigested food, okay? Now before we get into that, right there in this corner, if you see that right there, that right there is the subscribe button. Go ahead and hit that real quick for me if you will. We appreciate you doing so, and for those that have already hit it, we appreciate you following along video after video. Now, let's talk about uh, undigested food. A lot of the times we see this, especially in your insect feeders and in your whole prey feeders, such as snakes that eat rats, mice, uh, gerbils, hamsters, rabbits, pigs, whatever. Okay. Um, and we also see this in a lot of your animals, such as water dragons, bearded dragons, frill dragons, uh, leopard geckos, things like that, that eat superworms and mealworms and crickets and dubias and so on and so forth. Okay. But let's talk about kind of the reasons why you have unprocessed food. We'll take phone calls medically a lot. I mean, we're a full medical center, so we do all the medical care, but we'll take phone calls and people will talk to us, especially at this time of year. And if you look back to just a couple of videos, we talk about how to deal with your reptile in the fall and in the winter, dealing with those issues, the, the, the fall and winter issues, okay, which happens every year. We start taking lots of phone calls. But a lot of the times when people are feeding their animals and they start getting to a point where sometimes they'll either see uh, food, unprocessed food in the fecal or unprocessed food from regurgitation, okay? The main reason that that happens is because the animal is too cool, okay? One of the biggest key to a reptile's digestive process is temperature. Now, temperatures are gonna range from animal to animal, of course. Uh, a bearded dragon is gonna be much hotter than a ball python, and a leopard gecko is gonna be much hotter than a crested gecko. Um, so you need to know, of course, what the species is, but kind of echoing what I said in the previous video about dealing with fall and winter time, just because you haven't changed anything inside of your habitat does not mean that the animals do not feel the barometric pressure are dropping. They don't feel the cold air that comes through the walls, through the doors, when the doors and windows are open and closing, so on and so forth, okay? So understand, if it starts getting too cool inside of your habitat, then you will end up a lot of the times with the problem of undigested food, whether from regurgitation or whether even from bowel movements. They come out not fully processed. The reason why is the animals either regurgitate them uh, because they know they're not processing them fast enough, and so they're trying to get them out of their stomach because if they don't, then what's going to happen is the food is going to sit there and not actually process. It's going to sit there and rot, which will cause what's called gut rot. And over time, it poisons them and kills them. It, can, it causes a lot of internal organ and bowel issues, okay? So what they do is they dispel that food or dispel that, that, those feeders so that they're not just sitting inside of their stomach and uh, rotting away. Now, you'll see that in a lot of cases of in a brumation period. Period. Sometimes the animals will actually take down food and then it's kind of like having that second thought. It's like, oh crap, I shouldn't have done that. And then they'll spit that food back out um, because it's not quite warm enough and they realize it's not warm enough for them to fully process it and digest it like they're supposed to. The same concept applies in undigested uh, foods when it comes to bowel movements the same concept applies. Um, it goes ahead and gets into their lower digestive tract um, and gets into the bowels, um, and that gives, gives them the opportunity to be able to just go ahead and push it out through fecal matter. But the biggest reason why unprocessed food happens is due to cool. Now, there can be other factors like stress. Um, when you feed a cert certain snakes, if you feed them and start handling them right after, they will regurgitate their food due to stress, okay? And uh, um, stress-related issues, health-related issues, if they take food in and all of a sudden they're regurgitating their food a lot, it could be health related issues. Understand, um, there are some health reasons, there are some medical reasons why animals will regurgitate uh, their food and it, a lot of the times it would be uh, still somewhat whole, okay? Not fully digested. And in the case of bearded dragons, adenovirus would be one. In the case of leopard geckos, cryptosporidiosis would be one. Um, in the case of, uh, of a lot of your snakes, could be respiratory infection. Um, it could be internal organ uh, issues uh, where they're not processing their food like they're supposed to. So understand a lot of, there are certain medical conditions that can cause regurgitation of unprocessed 
foods, okay? Now, when it comes to, again, the, the bowel movements, nine times out of 10, whenever they, whenever they have a bowel movement of a whole parade, they've just, it's went through their body so quickly before they, their body even really had a chance to get any of the nutrients and break it down. And they just go ahead and instantly push it right out. That doesn't typically happen quite as often as if, uh, as if we're talking about the regurgitation part of it, but I, but that does happen. I've seen it a lot um, where they'll push out through the cloaca opening through having a bowel movement, an unprocessed chicken or an unprocessed rat or an unprocessed whatever. Guaranteed, the animal was too cold and it did not process the food like it was supposed to because it was not warm enough so that the animal could break it down um, and have the help of the heat to be able to break that whole prey item down and then get the nutrients like they're supposed to. Okay, now in this time of year, in all times of year, but especially in the fall and the winter time, um, in early, early, early spring, um, when it's still really cold, this is one of the issues that a lot of folks deal with that we have to help out with all the time. Okay, so that's the point of this video right here is just giving you some ideas, um, like with the last video about dealing with them in the fall and the winter. This one right here on dealing with regurgitation uh, and or dealing with unprocessed food uh, and why the food is not fully processed like it should be, um, always make sure you check your temperatures. Make sure the habitat is where it's supposed to be. For whatever your specific animal is, make sure it's a good, warm, uh, and even humid, uh, somewhat humid climate to the needs of your specific species, okay? Now, again, this is Chad. We are the Reptile Rangers here at the Kernersville Reptile Zoo and Medical Center. We appreciate you following along week after week after week. We have people constantly writing us in, wanting, to, wanting us to film about different topics, different videos, different so on and so forth. That's where a lot of these come from, okay? If you have any questions, feel free to get with us in the description below or uh, in the comments, but also in the description below, we'll have our information, okay? Uh, if you need to get in touch with us uh, for any kind of medical-related questions or any kind of actual help, feel free to utilize the phone number or any of the information to the zoo below. Now, we appreciate you following along week after week, and uh, we enjoy being able to bring you more reptile-related videos as we love these animals just like you do. Now, we'll either see you here at the zoo or we'll see you on the next episode. Later.